Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about trophoblastic diseases. We have a series of 2-3 to three lectures on this very topic. As a student, this topic, trophoblastic disease, is always a confusing topic. People actually, actually don't try to read too much or try to mug up the things because they they fear this that the topic is itself a very different kind of topic from the obstetrics of point of view now whether it is a cancer or whether it is a not whether it is a metastasis whether it is not how to treat it and why we are so much bothered about this thing so lot of confusion going on i try to make it easy and palatable to the students okay in this video we are going to talk about the concept the pathophysiology of trophoblastic disease the very basic information you need to further discuss the symptoms the management is concept so let's start about the concepts and pathophysiology now what is trophoblastic disease? It is a neoplastic proliferation of trophoblastic tissue. You know what is trophoblastic tissue? The trophoblastic tissue is the same tissue which forms the embryo. Let's see. This is the embryo. This is the inner cell mass. And this my friend is trophoblastic tissue or trophoblastic cells these trophoblastic cells will do they are just like agents they are just like agents who sustain the pregnancy who cover up the inner cell mass who provide them nutrition okay what is the role of trophoblastic tissue in a pregnancy it supports the real pregnancy or real fetus just like placenta fetal membranes amniotic fluids all these things are made of trophoblastic tissues what they do is they protect the ongoing pregnancy and they provide basic blood supply they provide nutrition to them they provide everything to them so <clears throat> this tissue when this tissue has some problems then it comes to the trophoblastic diseases okay so now let's start it is a neoplastic proliferation of trophoblastic tissue now every trophoblastic tissue <clears throat> it has a property of proliferation and invasion it's a normal property of trophoblastic tissue. It invades the endometrium. It establishes the blood circulation by invading the blood vessels. So it's not a new thing for trophoblasts to do a proliferation and invasion. As it happens in the early pregnancy. It also secretes the HCG that will made the progesterone secretion from the corpus luteum and sustain the pregnancy early pregnancy okay so whenever there is a genetic defects re remember genetic defects into the trophoblastic cells just like tumor cells they will lead to unchecked and defective proliferation and growth of the trophoblastic tissue and that lead to various spectrum of problems i am repeating genetic defects are responsible for trophoblastic diseases just like in tumors the tissue is unchecked and defective proliferation and even metastasis of this tissue that will lead to a defect uh, a spectrum of problems 
तो व्हाट्स द प्रॉब्लम हियर जेनेटिक प्रॉब्लम रिमेंबर वन थिंग नाउ वी हैव स्पेक्ट्रम फ्रॉम बिनाइन नियोप्लाज्म्स लाइक हाइड्रेटेड मोल व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट हाइड्रेटेड मोल दैट इज अ बिनाइन नियोप्लाज्म एंड व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट कोरियो कार्सिनोमा दैट इज अ मेटास्टेटिक नियोप्लाज्म मेड फ्रॉम ट्रोफोब्लास्टिक टिश्यू नाउ H mole is a benign one. It converts into invasion invasive mole, and then it converts into choriocarcinoma. So this is the spectrum of the disease. When we have a nomenclature problem, for example, trophoblastic disorder, the gestational trophoblastic disease contains H mole. that can be partial or complete and the gestational trophoblastic neoplasia that contains invasive mole choriocarcinoma and placental site trophoblastic tumor that is pstt so this is how we do nomenclature of the diseases now now let's go for the what is what is the basic pathogenesis of this diseases as we already discussed there is some genetic problem is going on so what genetic problem is going on let's see here what normally happens in fertilization we have a ovum ovum having the ovum having 23x genome the ovum having 23x genome okay and we have a sperm a single sperm either 23x or 23y from the father we have a 23x from mother and we have a 23x or 23y genome from father okay this both will do fertilization and made a zygote so a zygote have either 46 xy or 46 xx one of them either it can have a 46 xy genome or either it can have a 46 xx genome the genome of the genetic material of zygote is Uh, is from both mother and father equally 50 50% the genetic material of zygote comes from what equally father and equally mother so this is occur this occurs in the normal pregnancy what happens in neoplastic what happens in trophoblastic diseases is if if the ovum that is that come from mother the genetics of ovum the genetic material of ovum is inactivated i mean it get uh, uh, they get inactivated so they don't take part in genetic formation of the zygote so mother ovum the genet genome of the mother ovum gets inactivated so what happens if one sperm for example 23 x sperm in fertilization happens then this 23 x sperm will duplicate its genome and 46 xx diploid zygote will be formed but as we see here in this zygote the genome the genetic material comes only from father because the 23x sperm genome is duplicated into 46xx so when we have a 46xx xx zygote the genome is only from father and not from mother so the genome is solely originated from the parent genetics 
both sets of the gene uh, of the chromosomes are from father this happen this happens into the complete mole okay now the zygote form here is going to be defective as there is no mother genome involved and that's why it cannot it cannot just make a baby it cannot pro proliferate well it cannot functional function normally a second possibility is when there is a ovum having 23x of mother genome but if it is fertilized by two separate sperms having 23x and 23y so the zygote becomes with three sets of chromosome that's why it can be 69 xxy or 69 xxx okay the zygote is a triploid zygote and having two sets from father and one set from mother that this happens into the partial mole as this <coughs> structure is just not very very bad for example it has a maternal genome and paternal genome both so it it is defective already but it is a it creates the partial mole these zygotes either of either of a complete mole or partial mole they got implanted implanted and undergo marked proliferation they just don't function normally they do is marked proliferation these trophoblastic cells secrete fluid that collects into the chorionic villi that's why the grape like vesicle are formed and the stroma adjacent to this villis undergo hydropic degeneration because of the fluid secreted by the trophoblastic cells like this this is the structure of villi these are three villi we are seeing this is the stroma but in case of gestational diseases gestational trophoblastic diseases this villis become like cyst because of the fluid collection inside them and the stroma around it gets degenerated so the grape like uh, structures we see in moles is actually a villi okay so formation of this mole happens and there is no space for formation and growth of inner cell mass that actually we will make the baby okay so in partial mole what happens some part of fetus are grown that's why the name is partial mole in complete mole no fetal part can be grown in complete mole because you know this thing that it complete mole the zygote comes the genome of the zygote comes only from father it cannot it is not capable of making a baby even but in partial mole the zygote genome comes from both two from father and one from mother so it is still capable of producing some parts of fetus so it is called partial mole that's why the name is given complete mole partial mole now the proliferation of trophoblastic tissue it increases uh, when it grows into the uterus uterine height increases more than the real gestational age again i am saying it it is invasive but no functional invasion at it should it should invade the arteries but here the mole doesn't invades where very well arteries no vascular invasion they just grow like dumb structures so in this disease pregnancy induced hypertension is there if we see on usg 
the whole structure the mass occupying the uterus having so much of fluids and so much of echoes that's why the snowstorm appearance is there as we have seen this that, that hcg is the marker of trophoblastic activity so there is a lots and lots of amount of hcg has been secreted so because of this excessive nausea and vomiting is there the hcg interferes with the tsh that's why the thyrotoxicosis will be there the hcg also interferes like lh so this this will act on the theca cell of the ovary and they will make theca lutein cysts so this is how the cell this is how the trophoblastic disease is formed i hope you got understand and if you are not just go second time the video thank you